Okay, this next video, it's got me really excited. I've been wanting to build this for a long time. I'm going to call this one the Snapchat. Can you feel it? The excitement in the air? I love it because, you know, if this works, which I'm, you know, I'm visualizing it working. If it does, I mean, every fishing trip will be like, you know, getting to my limit. Every trip will be limiting out. At least that's what I've been dreaming about. So let's get started. Okay, this is what I'm coming up with. I'm gonna call it the 7.5 snap shed. And basically the head is going to be solid plastic. And it's gonna have a jointed tongue that sticks out. And the rubber body will slide onto the tongue. And so the head will be able to swivel against the body somewhat. I can add a bill, make it dive. The tie, of course, will be here, but off the bottom and top will also be some, I don't know, 50 pound braid that I can put a treble hook on. And then I can bury that hook in the back or in the belly. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. So, I'm trying to do a video, but my mother keeps interrupting. <laughs> Say hi to the whole YouTube world. Yeah, hello. This boy needs interrupted. He was born interrupted. <laughs> Okay, got him all sanded up, all the details in it. And I think the idea here that I want to go with is we're going to cut this head off. We're going to come in at an angle, cut the head off, and then we're going to um, basically kind of round, um, carve out a uh, kind of a groove on the back side, something along the lines of that, you know. And so our head will have a concave section that we can actually put a, a hingeable tongue in there. So imagine a little tongue sticking out of there that's hinged with a pin. And that tongue will go into this whole body, which will be made out of rubber. So you can see it now. Here he comes. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> And, uh, 
that way I would have been able to track that it was on target more. Should have been in here like like so. Anyway, so I got these two parts here, and what I'm thinking is, is that this will be, you know, out of a lightweight foam, or well, it'll be out of resin, but with balloons in it, micro balloons. So it'd be buoyant, and then I'll of course weight it. So I'm trying to get a fall rate or a float rate that'll hold this thing level. Now the next thing we want to do is cut a a groove in here and put a tongue in there that I can pin in place. Um, the reason I want to do that is I want to keep the mobility as much as possible. I mean, I could just put a barb out there and just slide this thing on and you'd be, you know, stuck with that right there and you're going to be rubber so you get some action. I just want to give it just a little bit extra action. And then what you can do is, uh, and the reason I want to do that is so, you know, the rubber gets tore up, say like a Huddleston. You guys ever buy a Huddleston, first cast, bass hits it, boom. Not knocking on Huddleston, great company, great products, but, you know, come on. You want to be able to replace this. So that's the idea behind this. So I could see this being weighted with an eyelet on top and used like a, you know, and, and even put a paddle tail on one. I can see it being used with uh, the eyelet in the nose and a slow sink and using it as a jerk bait. I can see me adding a bill right here, leave the nose in the island, and using it as a crank. So this has got me excited. I mean, I'm up, I'm up in the middle of the night thinking, man, I gotta get this done. The season is upon us. So um, you feel that pressure, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that's like waking up in the middle of the night going, I'm running out of time. I'm running out of time. So, let's get going. Let's get, we got no time to dilly dally. We got no time to fiddle faddle. We got to get on it. So let's go. Okay, so make sure you're explaining, talking, being personable. Yeah. Okay, we want to make a dorsal fin, and get the camera, get the, get out of there. 
All right, so we want to make a dorsal fin. I'm going to make it out of plastic. I've already got it drawn on there, but this is what I'm doing. I'm going to add a little, little, you know, Gizzard's got that little thing like a thread fin too. It's a long fin there. So basically it comes in like so. All right. And this is just thin Lexan. It's probably about, I guess that's 16th of an inch thick. 062 maybe. Sometimes I think the old details like that trigger fish. And we probably want it sticking out. I wonder. I wonder if we got to stick them completely out. Maybe I don't Eh. I don't want to get too carried away. We'll put them like that. Well, I think we're ready for some molds. Oh, we got one thing more to do. I've got to cut a slot and make a tongue. And that tongue is going to hinge inside of here just to give a little bit of mobility. So, anyway, back to serious business. We're going to make a mold of this and. Uh, I think the thing to do is make a mold of this. I'll go ahead and cut the other piece for this. We'll hold off on the mold for this until we get this going, and then we'll work the two and see what we got. If we like it, then we're making a mold of this. So uh, until then, let's get busy with the, well, I still have to design this piece because there'll be an insert in the mold. So there'll be a pre-existing groove in there or hole in there that is, you know, quite a bit smaller than the tongue, so it has to stretch over the tongue nice and tight, and the tongue will have teeth on it. So it should be a uh, enough to hold it. We will see. Okay, so off to the saw we go.
So this is the rubber I'm going to use. It's dead on plastics. Awesome stuff. Um, and I need to know what kind of stretch it has. So I've got what here. Okay, so right there is one and an eighth. That's pretty close. So half of that. So if it doubled its width, so half of that would be what six twenty-five, six six seventy-five. What is half of uh, so five sixty-two? is half. So if it doubled, so I think we need to be up around six fifty. Is what I'm thinking. Why don't we start at seven hundred? We'll start at seven hundred and see if it holds good. I don't want to tear the rubber. So the tongue, the tongue that makes up the slot in this rubber body will be seven hundred thousandths wide, which is less than three quarter of an inch, but more than five eighths. So I'm going to say uh, thickness-wise, it'll just be I don't know thirty thousandths thick, and. Uh, that should give enough stretch where it should be tight on that tongue. So we need to put a tongue in here in the mold so that when I pour the mold this will have that slot in it. And it's going to need to be about one and three quarter inches long. Okay, we got all the, uh, I put some vents in, that's all these are. You see me cutting these lines in, um, like here and here and here. They're just vents to release air so that it feels good. And uh, a lot of guys will ask me, they'll say, hey, why don't you just get an injector? And um, probably will. The, the reason I kind of like doing it this way is because what I'll do is I'll, 
I'll screw this thing shut and then I'll uh, fill that up with hot uh, plastisol and just plunge it in. This is just, I just stuck a dowel rod in there, plastic dowel rod, filled some rubber in there and let it set up and then I actually drilled a hole and pinned it so it can't come off. But anyway, um, I'll fill that up with hot plastisol, I'll uh, shove it in there and I'll set a weight on this. And the reason I do that is it puts continual pressure because these bigger baits, um, you know how plastisol shrinks, it, 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 you end up with big cavities that sink in. So with that continual pressure on that injection, um, I get a lot better part. So that's kind of why I keep doing it this way and don't just put a port in there and, and inject it and top it off. Okay, so let's get this thing ready to pour. Come out nice. So the key is to pour it vertically. You know, gotta stand it up like that and shove the plastic in it, get some bubbles out. So that looks nice. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> okay. Um, wanted to, I don't know if that I really showed you. Um, to take this thing apart, you just basically take and pull up, because there's, there's barbs, and you pull down, pull by, like so. See how that's made? And that actually is on a hinge, so you get some articulation there but uh, probably doesn't really matter it doesn't amount to much um, but when you put these on you basically slide it on and you go a little bit too far and then you pull back a little bit and then you crunch down and push in barbs into that rubber and it gives you a nice fit and it stays on I could cast it and you know another thing you can do is put a little shot of super glue in there I uh, used to glue baits together when they would tear when I was on the fish that were feeding like a salmon of Campostrano. <laughs> so anyway, just wanted to show you guys real quick how those come on and off. And again, um, I'm really excited about this bait. I mean, I've been losing sleep over it. And uh, that action was just like... It's like, it's like its tail was just going, I dare you, I dare you. I dare ya. I double dog dare ya. So, yeah.
I'm excited. I think we got ourselves a winner here. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to throw that off some long tapering points. Okay, I'm really, really happy and excited about this one. This is, this one's pretty crude. This is just my first attempt, kind of feeling my way through what I want to do. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to beef up the bill a little bit. I'm going to uh, refine the soft plastics a little bit. Uh, the paint job could be far better. I just wanted to kind of finish this video up. I spent a lot of time troubleshooting. Uh, different problems I ran into so uh, But this one's got me excited. I'm thinking real serious that this, this might be my next release. I might make these for sale um, We'll see I'm gonna play around with it some more. We'll see what uh, What I come away with but I love the way it's fishing this this pond's not quite deep enough For me to to really fish it it dives probably I'm guessing the way it's acting is probably gonna get around 10 12 feet deep which is going to be idea for some of the lakes I fish, Cherokee, Cumberland, Norris. Um, it's going to put this thing right off to some deep points uh, for some big smallmouth and some big largemouth and some big stripers. That's, that's the three species I target. So we'll see what happens. But thanks for tuning in. And hey, guys, don't forget to get on to the YouTube portion of the channel and hit the uh, subscribe button and like button. It really helps me on the algorithm so I can grow the channel. But if you enjoyed this build, subscribe, keep watching. Uh, got some more exciting stuff in the pipeline. So uh, put a comment down. Just say um, what you're thinking about it and ask me questions about it if you want. It's, uh, it's exciting times. Spring's here. The fish are starting to feed. I'm watching these guys post some pictures of some monsters. Oh, and I wanted to say, uh, I wanted to say thank you to... Uh, Chris Jones, he's the Bob Ross of soft plastics these days. He turned me on to the dead on, you know, I got on his YouTube channel, Chris Jones. It's called World's Worst Fishing, I think. And uh, he turned me on to the dead on plastics. And I'd used some, I had four or five different brands. But the dead on is dead on. It's some good stuff. So if you're thinking about trying something like this, check out the dead on soft plastics. It's the best they make that I've ever seen. So. And that's another again, and special thanks to my son who's running the camp. Thanks.